Hi, my name is Michael and I've suffered from topical steroid withdrawal for the past 8 years. This is the comprehensive guide to dealing with TSW. And just to show you guys what kind of condition I was in, these are some of the images of how I looked in the past 8 years. And this is how I look now. So I'm doing a lot better. I'm not in nearly as much pain as I was before. I can sleep fine. I'm not constantly flaking. And my nerve pains as well as the weeping is under control. But, but I'm still quite limited in terms of my diet. I'm still very sensitive to heat, the sun, my allergies, as well as any topicals, including water. I've spent countless hours in the past years trying to learn more about this condition and because it's a very confusing condition, it's not straightforward at all and there's no medical, well there's no mainstream medical information about the details of TSW. So I wanted to make this one video to just tell you guys everything I know about TSW and hopefully it'll help some of you guys. Note that I'm not a health professional and so none of the content in my video is health advice. I've developed this understanding of TSW, you know, from being a, a sufferer for so many years, from reading many medical studies, from going through many cases of TSW to learn from other patients' experiences, and from learning through some of the few doctors who specialize in treating TSW. And of course, a lot of self-experimentation. So there's going to be many sections in this video and there'll be timestamps. So feel free to jump through from one section to another. So what is topical steroid withdrawal? Topical steroid withdrawal, also known as TSW, is basically this very uncomfortable chronic skin condition resulting from the use of topical steroids. It includes damage to the skin, specifically your collagen, and the slowing down of collagen production. There's damage to your blood vessels, as well as damage to your nerves. It's not really recognized by mainstream Western medicine. Despite the general consensus that topical steroids can have these damaging effects, they never go deeper than a general acknowledgement. So chances are, your doctor or your dermatologist will probably just say that it's a case of serious eczema or worsening eczema. You need more steroids, you need immunosuppressants. That's usually how they try to deal with it. And I went through many years of seeing various doctors um, from different, even different countries and they have no idea what TSW is. And they also have zero ability to improve this condition. So that's a major reason why I'm making this video series to hopefully help some of you guys out there. Some will say it only happens from improper use of topical steroids. Some say it only happens when you don't follow your doctor's directions. But from reading the many sources and medical studies and the cases out there, it doesn't seem very accurate at times. So one defining factor is that the symptoms from TSW usually ends up being drastically worse than the eczema or the rash or the inflammation you had before you started the steroid treatment. And as time goes by, um, maybe after many months or a few years when your TSW resolves, you go back to your condition that you had initially before the steroid treatment you realize that the underlying condition was very, very mild compared to the symptoms from TSW. So the common symptoms. Here I'm going to show you some images I found on Google as well. So you have bright red burning skin. Sometimes we call this red sleeve syndrome. And you also have, uh, a lot of times it spreads from a small area into um, more areas or sometimes even full body, you have a lot of flaking. So the skin turns really hard and dry. Um, and then at some point, 
it'll flake off in small flakes and it just goes everywhere it just flakes like it gets stuck in your hair um it goes on your shirt it looks like you have dandruff except it's like not only your your scalp but your whole like wherever you have the uh, the rashes the symptoms and uh, a lot of times we have weeping so there's liquid coming out of your wounds or just your skin in general um there's peeling there's uh the skin feels very thin at times um it's hard to describe until you actually experience it but it feels like um not only is it very thin but it gets damaged very easily you get wounds um from get a lot of cuts basically and they don't heal quickly they it feels like there's a delay in wound healing and like i said you ha at times you're going to have rock hard skin um sometimes it feels like a shell um it's very very painful sometimes it feels like it's like sandpaper that's just stuck on your your body and in many cases we also become extremely sensitive to everything this includes water so when you shower you might feel like it it burns you become very sensitive to lotions and oils that are supposed to make you feel better they end up making the skin burn make, makes it more uncomfortable and i've even had times where even like a breeze feels like it hurts on my skin or like um air conditioning when it touches my skin it's very painful wrinkles are a very common symptom um when uh, the steroids they they damage the collagen you get wrinkles it's just like when when people get in the sun a lot the sun damages the collagen you get wrinkles and uh we have this thing in tsw called elephant skin and that's usually like very extreme wrinkles it looks like uh, i had this thing on my knee where after i used some stronger topical steroids from my dermatologist for i think just a few weeks the this i i didn't have any wrinkles on my knees before but afterwards the i had these really deep wrinkles and the skin looked like it was melting off of my knee it was, it was like drooping off of my knee so that's elephant skin and um you would also have very high ige ige is basically this measure of how allergic your your body is and in um when you usually take an ige test the um, normal range goes from 0 to 13 so, so 0 is means very healthy no allergy issues no reactions right now but 13 is, is very high it means you're very allergic but for TSW patients we often have numbers in the hundreds 200 400 like these kind of numbers like um, more than 10 times higher than their their upper range so um, yeah that's common and then people report that when the their TSW flare dies down their IgE goes back to normal so yeah and um, often we become very allergic to a lot of foods um, maybe animal fur um, just a lot of things like both on the skin and things that we eat we, we become allergic to these things during T, um, TSW but these people also report that these things often go away when TSW is over um, you often get itching pain so um, the uh, first of all the itch the itch is is quite different from um, normally when you have hives or you have a rash the the itch feels like it's on the outside but for TSW it feels like it's like people describe it as a bone deep itch so it's it's very deep and it's very very intense and um, pain there, there's a lot of pain that um, we experience um, we we think people think it's it's in the nerves it's because of the nerve damage that came from um, the topical steroids but of course we don't know for sure that's just our theory right now 
So um, we also experience a lot of like, it feels like a lot of pins, like constantly like sticking into the skin. So we have pain like that. And then we, we have tingling sensations. You know, I, I used to feel like, I feel like there were like insects crawling on my skin at times when I'm trying to like, when I'm trying to go to bed, I just feel like something on my skin, but it's just, it's either the, the um, blood vessels or the nerves. So these tingling sensations. Uh, we often have recurring skin infections. Um, I've heard like bacterial, fungal, and uh, viral even. So um, when when the skin acts like a barrier, so like a protective barrier, and when it's compromised, uh, the the bacteria or th these microorganisms often take the chance to to uh, infect. The skin when when it's compromised so um, that's why even if you eradicate it even if you take antibiotics antifungals you take these things they often come back right afterwards and this is from like uh, i've dealt with this like so many times but i've also read um so many other people sharing the same exact same story you know they go to the doctor they get they get these uh, a lot usually it's antibiotics but take antibiotics for a week and it's good during that week. But once that's over, it comes back and oftentimes it's even worse. Like the flare is even worse. And um, you know, um, the theory is that because the, the, um, the antibiotics also wipe out the beneficial microorganisms that, that would, um, that usually make it harder for your skin to get infected. You're also wiping those out. So, it just gets worse and worse. And you have pus filled bumps and um, hair loss. A lot of people, um, including myself, we lose our, our hair falls out, our eyebrows fall out, our eyelashes fall out. So it's, it's quite common. And uh, most people report that it grows back out afterwards. But I've also seen some people who suffer from TSW for a long time. Uh, they kind of, they're looking for ways to grow back their hair, but um, I guess it doesn't um, grow back so quickly or so, so uh, easily. And uh, we often have like secondary symptoms and the, we have insomnia a lot of times. And, um, you know, if you're itching and you're in pain all the time, your body's, it feels like it's, you're, it's going crazy. It makes sense that you can't sleep, you know, especially like when it gro goes to your back, to your neck, to your scalp, and you're trying to lay down. It's, it's just very, very uncomfortable. And um, people with TSW, often just just have sleepless nights and um, there's also other issues like your adrenals are are messed up and that that makes it even harder to sleep I've had I've spent like weeks months just laying in bed all the way until morning like seven or eight in the morning and then I finally fall asleep for a few hours and then this happens every single day there's no breaks and for for weeks on end I've had so many stretches like that, so insomnia is definitely um, a side effect. And the, the issue with a lot of these symptoms is that when you just look at it in, in like, uh, without too much detail, in, in just a very short amount of time, it looks like eczema. It looks because it's inflammation in the skin, right? That's what eczema is. Your skin is is inflamed. So it looks like a really bad case of eczema. So that's why it's really difficult for us when we go to a doctor. They're not they're not going to know anything about TSW. They're not e even if they they feel like it exists, they don't know about it in detail and they're not going to diagnose you with that. And even if they do, what can they do, right? Their only tools are antibiotics, immunosuppressants, steroids and these are the things that make us 
take longer to heal from TSW actually in general in, in, in general case so um, there's also some other symptoms um, a lot of times we feel really cold we lose the ability to to control our body's temperature um, so people like I've also experienced this many times like even in a warm environment I'm like shivering cold um, even with a hoodie on and it's like sunny outside it's, it's just um, usually when my skin is doing really bad I have I have um, this issue and it's also also shared by a lot of other sufferers so it's quite common and um, we also have out of control vasodilation so our blood vessels um, okay I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later but the blood vessels are um, when you use topical steroids it forces the blood vessels to constrict to stay like not to not expand basically because when it expands that's when you have your rashes so it gets rid of the rashes partly by constricting the blood vessels and after a while the blood vessels um, they kind of um, they're trying to expand and you're constricting it so it'll rebound it'll um, expand in an out of control fashion and especially once you stop steroids it'll expand really easily and very drastically so um, you have the rashes and it goes to a point where it expands so much that the blood vessels they have tears in, in the blood vessels and it becomes leaky so the liquids inside the blood vessels they leak out of the blood vessels into your, the, the other tissue in, in your skin and that causes an inflammatory response so you get more inflammation so as a result a lot of TSW sufferers also struggle with um, things like hot foods hot weather um, some people suffer with the Sun and <coughs> also foods that are high in arginine but low in lysine so all of these things are things that would cause vasodilation um, it would usually be considered healthy in like a normal person but in um, people who have TSW it just causes like flares big flares and uh, like like what I explained with the blood vessels um, leakage more inflammation so I would avoid these things and um, of course there are secondary effects like fatigue you're you're kind of like in this fight-or-flight response all the time and you have like you're constantly scratching and there's like flakes everywhere you're trying to clean up and once you clean it you're itchy again so you, you, you scratch again so I've had times where I spend like three hours straight just doing doing this cycle of scratching and cleaning and scratching and cleaning after a while it is extremely frustrating it's very tiring and um, emotional issues of course and um, and the last symptom is cycles so a lot of people feel like it's this endless cycle of the skin becoming thicker uh, like flaring basically thicker and and hard and then it'll the inflammation will die down and um, the thick skin turns into flakes and they flake off flake off everywhere and then um, for a while for a short while once it's all flaked off they'll feel like oh my skin like is in like a pretty good condition compared to like the worst TSW condition it's like it's like acceptable and then it goes back to like the next flare then it cycles and cycles like that so I've read hundreds of cases of how people go from having just a slight skin issue all the way to realizing that they have TSW and I've also talked to a lot of TSW sufferers throughout these years and most of the time when they explain their experiences from the beginning it's usually very similar 
So here, I'll share a general case of how it usually goes. So it starts out with a minor issue. Sometimes it's just a bug bite. Sometimes it's a skin reaction to a food or a cosmetic product. Sometimes it's mild eczema, maybe a rash on a small area such as the eyelid. And um, that's also what I experienced. And some people start from childhood eczema. Then the patient usually sees a dermatologist in hopes of getting it resolved. We are then prescribed topical steroids and we're told that it's safe as long as we follow their instructions. They usually say something like use pulse therapy, use the steroids for a few days and then stop and then repeat as the rashes come back up again. And usually it works very well in the beginning. The rashes are gone for a while, but over time we get worsening issues. We end up having to use the steroids more and more often and sometimes we go back to the doctor and they give us stronger steroids to try to fix our worsening condition. We go into this cycle of stronger and stronger steroids that work less and less effectively. There comes a point where the rashes start to spread. A lot of cases I've read start from a small area and it spreads to larger and larger areas and a lot of times it ends up being full body. So mine was similar to this. Mine started from uh, eyelid and then neck and then it was like face, scalp and then it was, I c you could see the, the, uh, the rash go down like my arm, my chest, my back, all the way down to my ankles. When it gets extreme, the steroids barely even work anymore and our skin becomes extremely sensitive to everything it comes into contact with. Like I said before, water, a breeze even, um, any type of lotion, any type of oil. We be, it, it just burns, everything just starts to burn at, at some point. And we start developing these big wrinkles that we didn't have before, um, these big folds in our skin and our skin is just burning red. At some point, people either realize that it's the topical steroids that's causing the worsening issues, or they try to do some research online and they see information related to TSW. For myself, it started in 2015, and back then there was very little information on TSW. So I spent hours and hours learning about different skin conditions, um, reading about people's anecdotal experiences and trying to match it with my condition, but none of it ever really matched up that well. So I saw doctor after doctor, none of them could even help me one bit, except for just try to give me more steroids, you know, tell me to use such and such lotion. Uh, I, told, I told them everything burned, but they just keep pushing these creams as if it would help, and none of it did. And after around one year, I finally found people online who shared this, very similar experiences, both timeline, how it looked, the symptoms, the areas uh, of where I had it, and the, uh, the red sleeves, the elephant skin, the weird facial flares, and they were TSW sufferers. So usually the TSW story is something similar to that. And one main difference though is that people seem to have different lengths of time in terms of how long they use topical steroids for. Some have used it for several months before developing symptoms, and some have used it for 10, 20 years. Some all the way from, from childhood. So for the sufferers who had it since childhood, they spend decades thinking that they had eczema the entire time and they have to use these creams. And a lot of times from what I've read, after they go through TSW, they end up returning to normal, where they don't even have the eczema that they had as a child. So now I'm going to talk about the mechanism of the, this disease, um, just share our current understanding. And a big problem is that there's, there isn't much interest in studying this because, um, well, there just isn't much monetary incentive 
you know these kind of investments usually go into creating new drugs and treatments that they can make a patent off of and then make a lot of money out of so there just isn't much monetary in in uh, incentive here but um, the current theory is that the topical steroids they lower collagen production um, they also um, break down the collagen that's currently there causing a thinned skin the um, barrier is in a is not working very well in that in that case so it becomes much more susceptible to microbial such as bacteria fungi and these things cause more inflammation and the constant inflammation also breaks down the skin barrier even more so it's like a cycle and another mechanism is that topical steroids like I said before, it suppresses bl uh, blood vessel dilation. So um, there usually causes a rebound. Uh, yeah, the out of control vasodilation that results from that causes the, um, the rashes, but also the, the leakage of the blood vessels, once again, causing a cycle of more inflammation and the inflammation, the chronic inflammation causes damage to the skin. So it's like, cycle of more and more damage weeping red sleeves and so on like i said before there are things like high arginine foods such as chocolate um uh, most types of nuts and uh collagen these things um as well as hot weather spicy foods and some some types of therapy such as red light therapy causes more vasodilation so um, for a lot of people these things cause more rashes and um, I would try to avoid them and then another thing it does like I said before are the damaged nerves which cause pain like the the uh, tingling sensations the needles and uh, the steroids can damage nerves. This is very well documented in a lot of medical literature, but some of, but for some reason, your dermatologist won't really consider this possibility. And then there are other issues, I would I would think are are uh, less serious issues, such as um, the steroids might cause the your body's cortisol function to go out of whack in a short term. Um, it might the constant inflammation might cause other issues such as adrenal adrenal um, function issues, and um, I think these are less important. These are like secondary effects from all the discussions I've read, from all of my my own experiences and, and understanding. I believe that the the physical effects that your topical steroids had directly on the skin um so the outer issues are the most important ones they're the most severe ones that amplify everything else that's happened that that happens internally in the body so you'll you'll hear a lot of people talking about trying to fix their tsw um, by healing the gut you know probiotics um a lot of like uh, you know improving liver function a lot of these things um, they might help but like I said um, it's the external damage that's causing that's amplifying all the reactiveness the the inflammation that all all these like internal things the issues that they cause are amplified because of how how damaged the skin is so um i think the internal things are mostly secondary um, apart from avoiding inflammatory foods that can have a big effect but even then even if you fix all these internal things as long as the skin is still in that condition you're going to have you're going to have um difficult issues 
So the first one is Dr. Marvin Rappaport. He is a very experienced dermatologist. He's been doing it since the 1960s. He runs a private clinic in Beverly Hills. And also back in the 1960s, he headed the Allergy Contact Dermatology Clinic at UCLA. So he's not only very experienced, but very well regarded. He noticed that many of his patients using topical steroids kept having to increase the dosage and had to use it more and more often. And eventually he figured out that it was not just a case of worsening eczema. Instead, these people were developing a reliance or an, or an addiction to the treatment. The topical steroids were causing the symptoms to worsen. And he has a lot of interviews on YouTube and other websites, but in general, he stated that all of his patients, once they stop using topical steroids, they suffer the painful symptoms, but TSW mostly went away in a few years, no matter what kind of treatment he gave them, or no treatment at all. In his research, Dr. Marvin Rappaport also saw that vasodilation, which is the expanding of blood vessels, was an important mechanism in TSW. Basically, the blood vessels are forced to constrict while you use topical steroids, and which effectively stops the inflammation. But once it's stopped, the blood vessels rebound and dilate uncontrollably. They expand so much that there are tears and leakages in the blood vessels, causing the red sleeve symptoms that we often see in TSW and a lot of inflammation. So he usually prescribes things like antibiotics or even immunosuppressants to deal with the symptoms. But like I said, he doesn't have any specific treatment that can speed up the healing process. His treatments only focus on dealing with the symptoms. The second doctor I'm going to talk about is called Dr. Kenji Sato. He runs a hospital that specializes in treating TSW. This hospital is called Hanan Chuo Hospital and it's located in Osaka, Japan. He uses this protocol that he designed called NMT, No Moisture Treatment. It's this protocol where you restrict the amount of liquid intake by measuring the amount of liquid in your foods and your drinks. And this is usually very helpful in decreasing weeping. And also the skin becomes very dry and it creates this protective barrier that no longer breaks easily like it usually does in TSW. The protocol also involves showering only once every few days and only for a very short amount of time, like around 30 seconds or so, just to wash off the bacteria on the surface of the skin without soaking the dry layer of flaky skin. He also encourages daily exercise. There are dangers to this protocol. That's because you're restricting water intake. And in addition to the water restriction, there must be no moisturizer used, no oils and no soaking with water or anything like that. The skin must be kept as dry as possible. And it's one of those things where it starts off being quite uncomfortable and painful when you, when you don't moisturize, you don't make it wet at all. But after a few days or a week or so, a lot of patients usually report that it starts get feeling a lot better. I'd say that NMT is one of the more popular and one of the more effective treatments out there for TSW. I've read many cases of people feeling like their skin never improved for a really long time. And then once they get into NMT and cut out all the moisturizers, the long baths, and um, they start doing the water restriction, their skin starts healing very quickly. And there are some groups dedicated to NMT on Facebook. So there's a lot of knowledge and experience shared there. You can also see how other people progressed while doing NMT. So um, one thing I also want to add though is that I've, although I've seen a lot of sharings where people say they go from um, being in a bad condition and then doing NMT and then, and then doing very well after a few, few weeks, few months, I've also, um, I'm also a little bit skeptical of its long-term effects because I've seen a lot of people mention that they did it for a while and they healed like, they say like they're pretty much normal, 
but then they after a while they either go back to you know drinking a lot of water and then they start having bad symptoms again so they have to do NMT again and I've also seen some cases where those people seem to heal really well after NMT but after a year or two they get this other flare and then they have to do NMT again so all I'm saying is that even though it seems to be a, an effective um, protocol for TSW don't expect it to, to be like that one thing that just cures it you might have to go back and do it again or, or stay on some sort of um, some sort of restriction for for quite a while and now on to Dr. J so he was the main doctor at a clinic in Singapore called the Skin Health Center and they use one of the most effective TSW treatments I've seen or used in my eight years. The treatment itself has several names, but right now they call it Ultra Pulse Contact CAP treatment, C-A-P treatment. So it's basically this laser treatment that you get on a weekly basis. And I also had this treatment for around five months, um, just around half a year ago, and it's given me some really good results. It's a treatment of their own design, so I can't find much outside information about it. But I've talked to a lot of past patients of these clinics and asked about their experiences about the treatment before I decide to go. So the clinics claim that the, the laser does several things, including increasing skin proliferation to thicken the skin, uh, killing bacteria and fungus found on the skin, and also some positive effects on the blood vessels. And they've been doing this for over a decade, and now there are also some clinics in the UK and Thailand that offer the same treatment. And I believe that Dr. J has moved back to Thailand, and he's the one running the, the, uh, the um, and he's the one running the clinic in Thailand, in Bangkok. So out of all the treatments I've read about for TSW, and all these treatments that people try and you know they talk about, this, this laser treatment is the one that's a true game changer, in my opinion. And even though for some people it's like it has amazing results, there are also some people who just don't benefit from it at all, unfortunately. Uh, I've also I've read some some people talk about how they also got this treatment, but it didn't help them. So, yeah, it's one of, I, I guess, like a lot of us in TSW, we, we all believe that we have TSW, but we might have slightly differing conditions. But I've also heard from, uh, this, there's this Chinese doctor that I saw in Singapore, and he also had some, some clients who also went to the laser clinic. And he said that some of those clients had results that were like a miracle. That's how impactful it could, it could potentially be for TSW patients. Unlike most of the other things I tried for treating my TSW, this laser treatment not only gave me the best results, but also lasting results. I haven't had this laser treatment for six months, but the benefits have, have remained. So I encourage you all to look through some of the Instagram accounts of these clinics. Uh, I'm gonna just put them on the screen, like uh, Skin Health Center, Skin Solace Clinic. Uh, there's like a CJ Serum page, and just they have before and after pictures. You can you can take a look and just get an idea yourself. And to be clear, I don't have any business relationships with these clinics. Um, not at all. I don't benefit from talking about them at all, but I just want my fellow TSW sufferers to at least be aware of this one treatment that could really lessen their suffering very quickly. And apart from the treatment itself, Dr. J also has his own set of theory in terms of different stages of TSW, how long it takes to heal based on what what class of steroids you used and for how long they were used for. Unfortunately for myself, for, for my case, it didn't really follow these theories very closely, but you can look for more information online. And also like Dr. Sato, Dr. J also shares the opinion that using moisturizers during TSW is detrimental to skin healing. 
it actually makes it worse. So I'm going to finish by briefly talking about one more doctor. So his name is Dr. Fukuya. He is another dermatologist, also from Japan. He no longer treats TSW patients. He now focuses on the cosmetic side of dermatology. But he's had a long experience in treating TSW patients before. So he left behind a blog that talks about his understanding of TSW and he talks about various related topics as well on this blog. But to, just to keep it short, he also supports not using moisturizers to improve the skin condition during TSW. Like Dr. J and Dr. Sato, he believes that in general, TSW skin heals much faster if you keep it dry. But he did note that for some patients, they're mentally in such a tough spot that um, maybe, you know, these taking a long bath or using moisturizers, the very short term comfort that it gives them mentally might be worth it at times. And lastly, on his website, he offers the serum that's just pure hyaluronic acid. And according to him, this helps our TSW skin not be so inflamed, basically. It improves our skin barrier function. Before I go into specific treatments, I'm going to give you guys a set of guidelines to deal with a general case of TSW. So although our conditions aren't exactly the same, this is the advice that should work for the most general case. So first, let me explain something. There are two states of TSW that we need to recognize. First, there is this red burning weepy condition where the skin is really damp. We'll call it the red stage. And then there is this dry, flaky, dull looking condition. We'll call it the dry stage. The red stage is much more uncomfortable, it's more painful, and the skin breaks very easily. It feels very thin, and infections may be more prominent, and all the pain you feel is enhanced. The dry stage is less uncomfortable. Um, the, dri the dried skin forms a protective barrier. The burning skin has mostly subsided, but the skin is hard, and there's a lot of flaking involved. Your objective is to avoid the red stage and to try to stay in the dry stage where the skin can go through its process of regeneration. And now into the guidelines. So first, you need to stop using topical steroids and other immunosuppressants, including protopic. I've seen many cases of people trying to wean off of steroids slowly and but in all of these cases, they later report that it was the waste of time. They ended up just using more steroids and it just made them suffer for longer. So weaning off steroids is more of a thing for oral steroids for people who has asthma. So I'd suggest you not try to wean, just stop using topical steroids first. The next step is something we call moisturizer withdrawal. We stop using all lotions creams, oils, as well as taking long baths. So this sounds counterintuitive to most people who are new to learning about TSW. And uh, although some patients claim that being moisturized helped them, I've read far more cases where the patient's rate of healing and overall comfort is much improved after this has been introduced. So moisturizers tend to keep us in the, the red stage and as I said before, we want to go into the dry stage for the enhanced healing and less pain. Also, if you refer to my video or section where I talk about the notable doctors who specialize in TSW, Dr. Sato, Dr. Fukuya, and Dr. J all came to the same conclusion separately based on treating their clients. They all think that it's better to avoid moisturizers but if you do moisturizer withdrawal, it's not a thing where you just feel a lot more comfortable instantly. You still have to endure at least a few days of the initial dryness before you can see some of the benefits. I'd say the only exceptions are CJ Serum, Zinc Ointment, and Dr. Fukuya's Hyaluronic Acid Serum. 
And even then, I think it's debatable. Um, the CJ Serum and Hyaluronic Acid Serum isn't really meant to be a moisturizer. It's meant to be used as just a thin layer on top of the skin. And then zinc ointment itself, I believe, has a place in spot treatment because it's both antibacterial and actually the zinc is drying to the skin. So it's not like other moisturizers. But even then, I'd say that if possible, just avoid all of these topicals if you can to avoid the chance of them causing more issues. And the next thing to do is to cut out taking long baths. I used to take long baths really early on in TSW and I sat in the bathtub every day for a few hours and that was the only time of relief I had from the pain. But then I released, but then I realized that it was constantly keeping me in the red stage. My skin was really easily cut open during that time. It felt really thin and it was incredibly itchy and painful whenever I was not in the bathtub. So remember that we want to get into the red, I mean, so remember that we want to get into the dry stage. So please avoid soaking your skin in water. Just very quick showers is what we want. And there's variations where people add bath salts, dead sea salts into the bath. And once again, TSW is a very confusing situation. It's not straightforward. The salts are anti-inflammatory. They make the skin look close to normal and it makes you feel a lot more comfortable. But the issue is you're not really healing the TSW by forcing the skin to not be inflamed in the short term. That only improves the outer appearance and the feeling of the skin. It does not benefit healing the underlying TSW issue. In fact, the soaking in water disrupts healing and stops us from going to the dry stage. <coughs> so I also did the, the Dead Sea Salts for many months early on, but I stopped once I realized that it wasn't the way. And don't get me wrong, these things do provide comfort, but TSW is a painful process for most people. Most people just have to endure a lot of pain to get over this condition. The next step is to experiment with cutting out inflammatory foods. And usually this begins with dairy, gluten, and sugar. The reason is because during TSW, you're in a state of hypersensitivity. So these foods may be fine once your skin is healed, but, but if you're suffering from a lot of inflammation and hypersensitivity, it may also slow down the skin's rate of healing. But maybe the food doesn't impact your TSW at all. So experiment with it and if it doesn't make an impact, then you can go back to whatever diet you like. So these three steps, first stop using topical steroids and then stop using moisturizers or oils and then cutting out inflammatory foods is some of the most basic but most useful things to do during TSW. One important idea to learn is that many treatments that people try, it might give you short-term comfort which people confuse for healing. For example, some people may use dead sea salts or oral immunosuppressants and then see their skin quickly becoming soft and normal looking again. The issue is that once they stop using these things, the skin goes back to being TSW again. So this means that the treatment did not help heal the underlying issue. And in many cases, only prolong the TSW condition. The skin seems to be better because the treatment suppressed the inflammation or the dryness, but the thin skin, the blood vessel issues has not healed and it cannot go through a process of healing because the body's reaction is being suppressed. I hope you understand what I mean by now, that just because something makes your skin look and feel better, doesn't mean it's healing the underlying TSW issue. If your skin goes back to TSW as soon as you stop the treatment, it wasn't healing the issue. So now I'm going to go through specific treatments. And first I'll talk about some, a lot of treatments that don't work. <coughs> so 
first, uh, dead sea salts, probiotics, fixing your gut, LDN, which stands for low dose naltrexone, collagen supplements, improving liver function, red light therapy, topical oils, high dose antioxidants, and oral immunosuppressants. I want to be clear that some of these things, such as probiotics, antioxidants, they can help lessen the inflammation. It may lessen the physical pain during TSW. It really depends on your individual case. <clears throat> Others, such as low-dose naltrexone, immunosuppressants, they suppress or lower the inflammatory response. But it may just be prolonging your situation if it stops you from going into the dry stage. I've also seen people very adamant that red light therapy is the way, but unfortunately it's something that they have to constantly do to maintain the condition. And once they skip a few, you know, a day or two, it, it gets back to being really bad very, very quickly. And like I said, our goal here is to improve the skin to a condition where you don't have to rely on some constant treatment. And many people have done this without any special treatments. So the issue I have is whether these special treatments create a situation where it's slowing down your body's own healing process. The tricky thing about taking collagen supplements and red light therapy is that they do in fact improve collagen formation while it is being used. But this benefit drops off right after you stop. This is according to medical studies as well as anecdotal experiences that I've read from many other TSW sufferers. <coughs> so it's another case of people only getting benefit when they constantly use it. The skin itself is not actually healing in the long term. Lastly, there are exceptions in many cases. So in your own research, be sure to note the, long, the longer term effects of your treatments. Maybe one of these things can help you. I'm just saying that in a general case, you're better off not putting your hope in these things. Many people rave about these treatments in the short term because they think the skin is healed. But once you search their more recent updates, you can see that the symptoms have either returned very quickly or they're looking for some other treatment. And now onto what works. So very few things will give you dramatic improvements in TSW without artificially suppressing your symptoms. And here are the best. So first there's NMT, no moisture therapy. And I also talked about this in the notable doctors videos or section. NMT is a protocol developed by Dr. Kenji Sato, who runs a hospital in Japan, and they specialize in treating TSW patients. NMT is basically a more intense version of moisturizer withdrawal. In addition to cutting out all topicals and long baths, they also limit the amount of liquid you intake from your foods and drinks. This helps the skin go from the red stage to the dry stage, and it also decreases weeping and inflammation. Another factor is to only shower every few days and each time only for around 30 seconds to quickly wash off the bacteria on the skin and avoid soaking the dry layer too much. Also, you're supposed to avoid excessive salt intake. This makes the body retain water and it could result in more weeping. So please read through this page by one of Dr. Sato's patients it goes into her experience with NMT and can tell you more about this process in detail. NMT typically requires at least multiple months to be completed and people do see benefits starting from a few days to weeks into it. There are also NMT groups on Facebook where people share their experiences and um, do note that NMT has its dangers because it does involve limiting water intake so Dr. Sato recommends doctor supervision, if possible. I've read many cases where people spend years being stuck in a very painful TSW state and not seeing any healing until trying NMT and getting significant results very quickly. Although this is already one of the most powerful treatments for TSW, I've also noted that many people report that 
they're all healed they have they even post their before and after pictures but after you know a year or two i see them come back and say they're in a they're in a new flair so especially if they start drinking a lot of liquids so in these cases they either end up doing nmt again or they start looking for other treatments so I, I must say that nmt may not give you perfect results or you might need to do this for an extended period of time but it's already one of the best options for tsw to be clear this doesn't mean that you can just try nmt and get out of tsw without any pain you still need to deal with very dry skin the skin cracking possible infections weeping skin and so on especially during the earlier stages of nmt the other treatment is cap treatment cold atmospheric plasma therapy i also talked about this one in the notable doctors video or section and this is a laser treatment that's only available in three clinics there's skin health center in singapore there's skin solace clinic in the uk and there's a clinic in bangkok run by dr j <laughs> this is a weekly treatment that spans several months. They use their own proprietary laser and it's specifically designed for TSW patients. The laser increases the rate of skin proliferation to counter our thin skin and also kills some of the bacteria and fungus found in our skin. Since it's proprietary, I haven't been able to find too much outside information about it but I do know that a lot of TSW patients had amazing results from it. I had this done late last year for five months and it gave me some of the best healing that I've had in all of my eight years. It's not even close. I had spots before, before the treatment that required daily bandaging because, uh, because of the elephant skin and constant weeping on those spots. But since getting the treatment, I haven't had to bandage it at all for almost a year now. There are also a lot of before and after pics that you can see on these clinics Instagram pages. I believe that this is the best treatment for TSW in, in general. It can potentially turn your situation around drastically. I've been digging through hundreds of patients cases for these past eight years and none of the treatments they've tried had this sort of impact. I highly suggest that you look through some of these Instagram pages to learn more information. Having said that, I've also read quite a few comments where TSW sufferers said that they had this treatment and it did not improve their condition at all. So this is always a possibility. Lately, I've been seeing more and more people making content about taking a trip to Bangkok and getting this treatment. They share clips on YouTube as well as Instagram, and I believe that Bangkok is the cheapest option, so even people from the West are making the trip. And these are great sources of information if you're interested. So from everything I've read and learned, these two treatments seem to be the only treatments that are significantly useful for healing up your TSW skin quickly. And now I want to talk about a few other specific topics and how to deal with certain TSW issues. So the first one is weeping. The weeping and flaring we get results from too much vasodilation and leaky blood vessels, like I've explained in my previous videos. And we want to avoid things that cause vasodilation as well as water retention. So in, in addition to doing NMT, you can try to avoid foods such as hot foods, foods that are high in arginine, like chocolate, nuts, coconut water, and some other things like red light therapy, celery, and don't drink a lot of water in a very short amount of time. Because these are all things that cause vasodilation which would worsen our symptoms. One tip I have is that if you drink a lot of water and, or you ingested a bunch of salt, you can undo some of, the, some of the weeping resulting from that by eating a high potassium food, such as a banana. That should help you excrete some of that water and salt. 
And I did this many times during some of my worst flares and I can say that it really works. But do be careful of high potassium foods if you have other health issues such as kidney problems. And when you have liquid on your skin from weeping, you don't want to wipe it away. You want to let it dry on its own and it'll form a hard protective layer around your skin. It takes a lot of self-control to do this, but this is how they do it in NMT as well. Some people bandage their skin, but in general, it's best not to absorb the liquid. It's best to just let it dry on its own. You can stand in front of a fan to get it to dry as quickly as possible. <coughs> the next thing is flaking. One of the most common things I see newer TSW patients talk about is scratching off and remove, removing the flaky skin that's attached to them. It's quite itchy and uncomfortable, I understand, um, but be sure to leave them alone and don't take them off intentionally if you can. The issue is that there is new regrowing skin that's attached to the underside of these flakes. So removing them forcefully will cause new wounds and it'll keep slowing down your rate of healing. And just like weeping, it's best to leave these flakes alone and let it, let it fall off whenever it does. As you can probably tell by now, the general idea in TSW is to just let the body do its thing let it heal on its own. Most of the additional things that we tend to do, such as moisturizing, wiping liquid off the skin, removing flakes, removing scabs, these are all to be avoided if possible. Another issue that a lot of people suffer from is infections. These are often chronic and sometimes superficial. When it's superficial, it's something that you can't really permanently wipe out. These microorganisms already existed on your skin before you had the infection, but it's only going out of control right now because the skin barrier is compromised. This causes a different type of itching and worsening of the skin in general. There's no one size fits all treatment for this issue. The one thing I can say in general is that being in the red stage makes you more vulnerable to infections than being in the dry stage. One thing you can do is to get your skin swapped by a doctor. They take some skin flake samples and put it under a microscope to identify what type of infection you may be dealing with. I've read many cases where people take antibiotics to try to I've read many cases where people take antibiotics to try to deal with the infection. And I mean hopefully it goes away after the first time. But I know that in a lot of these cases, for people who have TSW, we end up having, we end up feeling great during the course of antibiotics and maybe a few days afterwards, we're still good. But very quickly, the itch, the flares, and the infection comes back with a vengeance. I've also been in this situation myself several times, and to be honest, I don't have a great solution for you. You may want to look into probiotics or even use ways of using probiotics topically to improve your condition. The issue with repeated courses of antibiotics is that not only does it wipe out the bad bacteria that was causing the uncomfortable infections, but it also wipes out the good bacteria that is usually there to help fight off the infection. And also it could lead to drug resistant bacteria when you take repeated courses. And the other scenario that I've had to deal with several times is that after taking antibiotics, it wiped out the good bacteria as well. So some of the fungus that usually lives on the skin, that starts to overgrow and that starts a new infection. So after the antibiotics, I get a fungal infection. And it's a similar issue. You take oral antifungals, it might wipe it out temporarily, but these infections just often come back. And in the case of fungal infections, you may control it with both oral antifungals as well as shampoos such as Nizrel or Selsun Blue. 
You can use these on the skin and leave it on for several minutes before you shower. I wouldn't recommend using antifungal creams, not only because it would have the effect of a moisturizer, but also because of our issues, our infections usually end up being very widespread. And it's just not very helpful to try to spread a small tube of cream over your over these large areas every single day. Antihistamines. So in general, once again, avoid if possible. Doctors love to prescribe antihistamines as if it's harmless. And for a short-term use, I agree, it's probably harmless. But there's also a lot of well-established information that says that antihistamines themselves often cause rebounds. You can search terms such as Zyrtec withdrawal. And we want to avoid this messy situation where you have this withdrawal on top of TSW. It just gets very messy. And the issue with antihistamines is that once it wears off, the histamines were not removed there's still a high level of histamine in the body. So if you have histamine issues, avoid high histamine foods, such as cheese, alcohol, shellfish, and fermented foods. And if you really wanna take something for it, take high amounts of vitamin C. This one is something that you'll have to experiment with because vitamin C can also cause vasodilation. So for some people, it's great. For others, it could worsen our issues in the short term. But vitamin C itself is great for removing histamine. It is vital for your body's production of the Dow enzyme, which is what removes histamines. And it's also important in collagen production. <coughs> Since vitamin C is a water-soluble vitamin, the only real downside is if you take too much of it, you get diarrhea. Apart from that, it increases your chance of kidney stones by a little bit, but overall, it's one of the safest things you can take. The other option is to take Dao enzymes before each meal, and that will help lessen the histamine coming from your food. All right, now, supplements. Like many of my fellow TSW patients, I have multiple cupboards filled with various supplements that I've tried over the years. My stance on supplements is that in general, if you're not sure that you need a specific supplement, you might as well not take it. I see many people assuming that there's no downside to supplements, that it's just better to take it just in case. And the issue is that taking supplements can have other effects on other, other functions of your body, such as your liver function, and that would cause an unnecessary burden on yourself. Especially for things like multivitamins, if you follow a decently healthy diet, you're probably not running low on any vitamin B or copper or zinc. You might want to do some blood tests to measure some of these levels if you want to know for sure. And in general, from what I've read, none of these supplements are really impactful in healing TSW itself. If you happen to have some deficiencies, then it would help in that. So maybe indirectly it could lessen your TSW symptoms or if you have other health issues causing oxidative stress such as heavy metals then antioxidants such as vitamin C, E, um, some things like copper, zinc it may help you feel better in the short term. I'd say that if a specific supplement does make you feel significantly better pay attention to it even if it does not fix your TSW specifically, it may indicate that there are other issues that are contributing to the skin inflammation. Vitamin, vitamin D and fish oils are very popular and I, I wouldn't recommend taking fish oils because they suppress inflammation in the short term, which is what we don't really want for TSW. And in the long term, it allows more potential for oxidation. And vitamin D, on the other hand, is, it's a tough one because there's so much debate about all the details such as whether it's even safe, uh, whether it's needed, uh, how much we actually need. There's so much debate about that and 
and I've dug into the topic myself before. Once again, my advice is if you don't absolutely need to take these supplements, then don't take them. And the last topic I'm going to talk about, traditional Chinese doctors. So a lot of patients have gone and seen these traditional Chinese doctors and I'm based in Asia so I'm quite familiar with these types of doctors. In general, they can help the overall health of the body in ways that Western medicine cannot. But in this case, it's very difficult to find a suitable Chinese doctor that can actually help with TSW specifically. Unlike Western medicine, each Chinese doctor has their own methods and their own ways of using herbs. So you're going to get differing results depending on who you see. I saw many reputable Chinese doctors myself in, and in general, I'd say that they're not really capable of improving TSW. I think, I think it's because TSW is a man-made disease, while Chinese doctors are best at healing natural diseases. I don't think they have a great way of thickening our thin skin directly. And there are also some considerable risks. I know that there was a prominent TSW group a few years ago and everyone in this group went to see this one Chinese doctor claiming that she was able to heal their skin. But several years later, they took her cream to a lab test and they realized that she was putting steroids into her creams. I've also heard of similar stories from other friends and family and we just don't really know which traditional Chinese doctor to trust. The other risk is time and money. I spent so many months seeing these Chinese doctors here in Asia who were supposed to be really famous for specializing in skin issues. All of them claimed that they helped a lot of other patients that had like the same issue that I had. But after several months, it becomes really obvious that they aren't getting the job done and they're running out of ideas. All of it ended up being a waste of time and money, not to mention the risk of steroids in the herbs. I've also read many other discussions from TSW patients in Asia, and the general consensus they have is that their Chinese doctors either did not help at all, or they only felt better while they were taking the herbs. The one traditional Chinese doctor who I can say really helped my TSW is Dr. Mark Chern, who is based in Singapore. I actually did a whole video on him as well. He really calmed down my flair in just a few weeks of herbs, and he's very experienced in treating TSW specifically. He already talks about TSW in detail on his website, so that's why I went to him in the first place. So in general, unless you're seeing Dr. Mark Chern, I'd say the chances of you finding a Chinese doctor who can help your TSW are very slim. But having said that, a short-term course of Chinese herbs may help the body with other inflammatory issues that may be contributing to the skin issues as well. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that Chinese doctors are not good or that they're not good at dealing with skin issues. What I'm saying is that TSW is so different from most of your other skin issues that it's just not something that most Chinese doctors are equipped to deal with. All right, to end this video, I'm going to briefly talk about some additional sources of information to look into. So for Facebook groups, these are very helpful. I recommend two specific TSW groups. There are many members in these groups who can help answer your questions and give you moral support. And you, you can look through and follow some, some of these other people's, um, I guess, journeys or experiences through dealing with TSW. Um, it's very hard to get support from non-TSW people because they just can't really understand what you're going through and what you're trying to deal with. So 
yeah, these, these groups are, are really good for getting that support. The first group is called Topical Steroid Withdrawal Red Skin Syndrome Support Group. And I'll add an image of um, their profile picture. And the second group is called Support Group for NMT, TSW. So there's often a lot of discussion about experimenting with other types of treatments in these groups. But in general, the most experienced people will give advice similar to what I told you in this video. And if you want to look more into CAP treatment, cold atmospheric plasma treatment, you can search TSW on Instagram and look through some profiles as well as look through some of these handles. Maybe even send them some messages, ask them a bunch of questions. So I also want to speak briefly about ITSAN as a source of information. So when I first got TSW, it was back in 2015 or so, or 2016, and ITSAN itself was quite new. I very much appreciate and respect their work in terms of bringing attention and bringing legitimacy to TSW. But since early on in my TSW, I found that their tips and guidelines don't seem very helpful. They're very generic tips for skin issues in general. And they talk a lot about using oil products and baths, which are the opposite of what Dr. Fukuya, Dr. Sato, and Dr. J would recommend. So I think Itsan itself is newer in learning about TSW, so I would suggest following the doctors I mentioned instead, because they each have at least a decade of experience in dealing with TSW and um, they've had a lot of success. So although I think ITSAN is a great force for bringing TSW awareness, I wouldn't use them as a source of advice in terms of how to deal with my TSW. And that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I hope that it can help some of you guys out there and be patient you can't really rush into healing tsw and that's it my name is michael good luck